Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Queued Up Podcast Facebook page. And we are going to be doing a pre-match press conference with uh, Roy from Roy's Basement, as well as the players Alex Pagulain and Sky Woodward. And uh, we are just waiting patiently for uh, Ariel, uh, for Roy to, uh, to call in, and uh, then we will start this up. So, uh, I see actually Roy is in the audience, so I am ready for you whenever you are, Roy. And uh, I guess to give a little bit of the backstory behind the match, we are going to be doing a race to 25 best 3 out of 5 sets for $50,000 between Alex Pagulain and Sky Woodward. And, uh, I mean, I'm pretty excited for this. The, uh, the more fine details of the match, it's going to be a 10 ball. Uh, race to yeah, race to twenty five. Best three out of su- best three out of five sets, and it is going to be on the bar boxes with a magic rack and rack your own format. Uh, it is starting tomorrow at seven p.m. Eastern time, and it is yeah. I mean this is this is going to be the very first uh, Roy's basement belt given away for the bar box king. Uh, the winner of this will receive that and. There are a couple more belts that are going to be given out very, very soon. Um, hopefully in the next couple of months, uh, it sounds like. We can look forward to a, a, a 10 ball on the big table belt as well as a uh, one pocket belt. So um, we are going to be getting started up very, very soon once we are able to get Roy in from... Uh, from the actual room itself with the players. So uh, let me let me just swing over there right now and uh, check out what is, yes. So uh, we will be bringing in Roy as we speak. So um, just a couple seconds until, we'll, until we are able to get in and we are getting Roy in right now. Maybe we're not getting Roy in right now. We're going to try and get Roy in right now. And here you are. You have visual for the first time. Ooh. Going to have... Uh-huh. Let's try this again. So we might be having a little bit of technical difficulties getting this started. Let's just get this in. There we go. Got to get all the flags involved here. So... there. Oops. So, let's try this one more time. Ah, that's what it was. We had problems with the, the call. We were doing audio and now we have video. Here we are. Hello, guys. Hello. Happy able, New Year. Happy New Year to you too, everybody. Uh, we're able to hear everyone. Where's and our gift? Where's your gift? Is uh, that belt around uh, Roy's neck if you earn it? Oh, I see. <laughs> hey Nate, how you doing? This is Roy. <laughs> I'm doing good. How you doing, Roy? Yeah. Well, let's get it on, right? Yeah. Uh, we are here, and uh, we can get it started up. No, no need to dawdle, right? So uh, we'll start off with uh, with a couple questions for you, Roy, since uh, you're the organizer of getting all this uh, this good stuff going on. First off, I guess I should say we got the the Canadian flag and the American flag in the background. I had to throw that in there for you guys. Oh, wrong background. Are you guys able to see me? Oh. Now I'm now I'm struggling to hear you guys. Oh, there we. See what you look like. Oh, we're not uh, we're not able to pick up me, huh? No, we see you. We no. see you. Oh, yeah, okay. we're good. We can see you. Yeah. Okay. So Roy, uh, we'll start out with a question for you. Um, we obviously, as fans, we love actually getting to watch the matchup itself, but uh, we kind of get to see the finished product. We don't necessarily get to see how the, the sausage is made with getting these matches together. So why don't you take us through some of the actual steps that go into setting up a title a title bout like this? All right, so this is going to be our first title belt match. 
Meaning, I think we have the top two in Barbox who's fighting for this belt right now. That's hanging on around my neck, shoulder. Uh, one of them is going to be taking this with him either Saturday night or Monday. I mean, Sunday. So, when one of them gets it, they hold the title of Barbox Money Game King. Of course, it's called money a money game because there's got to be bet to it. Okay, this is all about money games, not like tourney plays and all that. So I'm gonna be rolling out with more belts. The next one will be the ten ball, uh, ten ball belt, which is it's gonna be a big match. So let's come back to this one. So I think this is the number one and number two. This is the top two that we have right now fighting for this belt, starting tomorrow. So. Um, the preparations, yes. Um, yeah, a month ago, uh, my partner Dima said, "Let's do this match." You know, I think we can get a lot of bets on both sides on this, which is legit. You know, and this is the best of the best in bar box. So I agreed with it. And from there, what we do is we accumulate bets on both sides. You know, uh, and then we say, "Okay, we're still short on this side and all that." Once we match them up, you know, and there we go. It's like UFC fights or boxing fights. There's a belt. There's a contender list, you know, and um, it's going to be fun. So this is what we have in the future for all the pool fans. This is going to be so fun doing this, you know, and our priority is to take care of the players who is going to be involved in this uh, matches, you know. We want, like, my other partner, which is Anthony, who owns this pool room, Anthony Luong, he said, Roy, I want to make this, like, if we invite players to do these matches, you know, I wanna we wanna take care of them first. We wanna make them feel like it's more like a vacation type, you know. We set them up in a nice hotel with jacuzzi, with bubble baths and all that, you know. Eat eat good, eat good and all that. And then when the time comes, a match, you know, they're gonna be trying to chop their heads off at each other, you know. Right. Yeah. The jacuzzi. Does it come with some something else or just the jacuzzi? <laughs> Alex is asking here, but <laughs> we're not in Canada. <laughs> so Nate, yeah. So what's next? Uh, so we'll uh, we'll get a question up for the players. Um, Alex, this one's for you. Um, given that most of the events that you play around uh, the world are played on big tables um, how is how is your preparation for a bar box event like this how is it different from those those preparations I can't really tell you because I don't know <laughs> so uh, bar table is kind of like uh, probably is perfect for my size and uh, I believe uh, that's this got to be my best game. I don't know. I'm not sure because I I, uh, I can see everything. I can reach everything. Mind you, I still use the uh, rake once in a while, maybe uh, one out of four games. But uh, that's very um, uh, unique, actually, because i never seen anybody use this bridge when I play bar table. So, so that's got to be... Uh, I don't really know what to tell you, what kind of preparation that I... I uh, prepare for this but um, for some reason uh, I think I, I like this game there you go uh, so Alec or, uh, so Sky will ask you a question next um, Sky was really coming into his prime as you were basically starting to play this game there is not a huge age gap between you two but there's there's definitely a couple years uh, when you were growing up playing the game did you did you watch a lot of Alex's career and uh, what did you learn from him if you did um, I mean, yeah, I, wa I watched Alex when I was a kid. Like, uh, I watched him play Shane at the, the old Derby City. Um, I watched him on, on YouTube. Um, he's a fun player to watch, so I've always always watched him uh, growing up. And, uh, I mean, it helped me, like, like take the game a lot easier by, by watching him because, I mean, he's, he's never that serious. So, I, I mean... That's kind of that's kind of where I got it. Just not to get upset playing or anything, and uh, that's from uh, Alex a lot. Did uh, did you learn anything and incorporate anything that you learned from his game and uh, incorporate it into your game? 
Uh, just the attitude part, really. Just uh, other than that, was just uh, like playing events and everything and getting better. Okay. Uh, so Roy, we'll ask you a question now. Um, this this whole belt concept could potentially be absolutely huge, and it has been in the works now for you know it. This didn't uh, this didn't come out of the woodworks last week. Uh, this has been in the year. This has been in the works for several several months, if not years, at this point. What does it mean to you to finally be able to give out your first belt on Sunday? Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, it got derailed for about three years. I started this about three years ago, and it got derailed. I think I gave up a belt when uh, when Dennis beat Tony Chohan, and the Sword Brothers got that belt. So we're going to redo the whole thing. This is a start again. We're restarting right here, and it's, it's going to be big. Um, folks, watch out, because th th this is what I'm trying to do. There's no politics involved. You know, like how we have a, I, I don't... I don't take it away from big organizations just doing like, oh, this player is representing this, this player is representing this, and we're trying to hold the qualifiers. With my money games, with a contender list, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be a 18-year-old, you think you're so good in pool, you can be from Nepal, you know, and say, hey, I'm good enough to play your number three in your contender list. So be it. As long as you have my requirements, which is a minimum bet of ten thousand dollars, you could, you know, challenge any of those in the contender list and move yourself up in the ladder. That's what I'm trying to do. There's no politics involved. If you think you're good enough, you have a backer or you have your own money to get on to this list. Hey, let's do it. You know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we'll move on to Alex and Sky. So we'll ask you uh, this one both. Um, especially for the matches on Saturday and Sunday, it's there's a potential eight to ten hours worth of pool that uh, you two could play between you know those two sets. Um, how do you train your body physically as well as mentally to be able to basically play your best pool for eight to ten hours at a time? So we'll start with uh, Alex first. Alex, oh, we're already used to this. Um, we played tournaments for ten hours, so it's not really like new to us. So, and besides, we both. Uh, I, I, I'm 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 assuming uh, Skylar is fit. I think he does a little bit of workout, and so am I. So this one should shouldn't be an an issue for us. Guy, okay. um, really same thing Alex said. Plus, um, like get enough rest the night before and and uh, eat a good meal before, so uh, you're not like drained or anything of energy. Wait a minute, what is good meal to you? Ooh. You know, like, Steak like, uh, adobo? yeah, the chicken adobo and. <laughs> hey, uh, Nate, did you guys catch when, um, when Sky visited the basement and I, well, CEO wasn't home yet, so I couldn't have him doing some bacon in the kitchen. So, but I had him singing a karaoke. I did, that was going to be one of my questions. Yeah, absolutely. I'll actually, I'll ask this question right now to Alex then. Uh, Alex, on a scale of one to ten, how jealous are you that uh, Sky sings better than you? You know what? <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to go with Sky because I can't sing word. Well, I can't. I can't swear on live, right? But uh, I can't sing at all. You know. So, but I still love singing. Although the singing don't love me, I will still sing and embarrass myself. I don't care. Uh, Nate. Um... I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Alex is more like a rapper because uh, I, I have him in my live cast. Like, he was rapping. He's rapping pretty good too. And with with Sky, he's a totally different kind of karaoke uh, singer. He's a country singer at first, and he was telling a story. I, I kept I was in the background. I kept telling him, Sky, go ahead, tell your story. And he was digging it. He was closing his eyes doing karaoke. I was like, I got him. I got him deep. <laughs> he's got that Tennessee whiskey for us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was singing it while he's he's pretending he's holding a glass of whatever, you know, in his left hand. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, Roy, we'll move back uh, for a question for you. Uh, looking to the future now, you have uh, two more belts to be handed out. Uh, why don't you give a, a couple seconds just to talk about those belts and uh, who you're looking at contenders for those? Okay, two belts for now, yes, uh, which is uh, ten ball and one pocket. But we're not limiting limiting ourselves to just two more. We could have more in the future, like you said, 14.1, straight pool, whatever, but right now I'm concentrating on 10 ball next, 
and probably one pocket. This is going to be huge. This is going to be like title belt fights right away. With a 10 ball, I'm probably working on the next match will be Shane again. Shane versus Filler. Probably not. Uh, that's probably going to happen in 9 ball. So it's going to be in 10 ball, it's going to be Shane versus uh, Chang Jung Lin. Bro, that's what I'm going to be working on. That's that's what fans wanted to see. And for one pocket, you guys have been waiting on this. And these two are probably the top two one pocket players in the world. And they're not getting any younger. So we got to do this. I don't need to tell you guys who these two. It might happen this year. So we're talking about Dennis and Alex. There you go. It has to happen. It has to happen. Those two, uh, I think those two have been the best one pocket players now for 10 plus years. Well, Dennis has kind of grown into it, I guess. But Alex is, I mean, Alex has played such good one pocket for so long. It's its kind of nice to see Dennis getting uh, getting his game up there so that somebody can kind of challenge Alex. Uh, so we will move on to a question for Sky. Um, you've been on my podcast in the past, and you've actually said that your favorite game was Bar Box 8 Ball. Uh, given the recent success you've had on the big tables, uh, is that changed, or do you still like the Bar Box 8 Ball game the most? Well, if you say favorite game, I mean, nah, it's still my favorite game because that's what I grew up playing all the time. So, I mean, I don't know. It just feels like it's like playing with a Q for 10 years and then getting a different one. And then you got to go back. It's just the other one's just home to you. So, I mean, I don't know. It just feels like Bar Rocks 8 Ball is like just my like go-to. I just feel like I feel comfortable playing it. My favorite game. That's a good answer. Uh, so, Alex, we'll take uh, we'll get a question for you next. Uh, your name has already been floated. We just kind of had this conversation uh, with the one pocket. What do you think it would mean? What would it mean to you if you were able to hold this belt as well as the one pocket, the very first two belts that are handed out? Ooh, um, right now, how I feel is I just wanted to play as much as I can. Obviously, this means a lot to me. Um, but I'm looking out to play all the best pool players this year. So watch out, all pool players. If you're ready to play, I'm here. I'm going to play all games. So um, uh, like I said, get ready, get your stay course together. I got my people ready, and I'm ready to play any game. So that's it. Absolutely. Uh, so Sky will get you a question next. Uh, the past two years have been, I mean, just in crazy, just crazily uh, prosperous for you. You've done so much in the game of pool in such a short, short amount of time. You've you've won two Moscone Cups. You have two Moscone Cup MVPs. Uh, you've won the Derby all around, the Derby bank, uh, the bank ring game, the tied third at uh, the World Pool Masters, the nine ball champ at Derby City. I mean, I'm I'm scraping the surface of what you've been able to accomplish in the last few years. Uh, what would it mean? Uh, what what would another win like this added to the belt towards your career? Would that mean to you? Um, it would it would be amazing. It's uh, it's really just a privilege to to play a, a big set with Alex like this. Um, and if I I mean if I win, like watch him grow up, it would it would be uh, crazy to uh, win a win something like this against him. And that really old. when they said they watch me when they growing up, you know that <laughs> I think they, you know that like diminish my uh, my confidence. That makes me feel old. <laughs> uh, so we'll expand upon that question a little bit, to, uh, um, Sky. Uh, of all of the accomplishments you've had in the the first two year, or the last two years, as well as the rest of your career, what is what has been the the single most influential win do you think in your career? Um, the, yeah, the Derby, the Derby for sure. It's uh, just to win, just to win uh, uh, the all around. It's like ever since I was a little kid, I always told my parents. I said, I don't even care if I don't get paid. I just wanna, I just want my banner up there. That would be <laughs> awesome. So I, it's just, I mean, that's a, Sorry, that's probably it. That's a, it's amazing. Like I said, Derby has got to be the ultimate for pool players that plays all all games. For me, I won the world, I won the U.S. Open, but Derby is the most, like, memorable win that I ever win. So I think I'm sure Scholar feels the same way. There you go, Nate. I hope Greg Sullivan is watching this and hearing all this. So uh, that's actually a perfect transition into a question for Alex. 
Um, for anybody who listens to my podcast, uh, I actually have been talking about Alex with the discussion of the Mount Rushmore, uh, the idea of the four greatest pool players of all time. And Alex actually makes mine just because he's been such a dominant pool player across every single discipline of Q sports. He's been a snooker champion, a eight ball, nine ball, 10 ball, one pocket, you know, he, you name the game and he's had a huge amount of success in that game. And for that, I put you as one of the four greatest pool players of all time. Uh, why did you, how was it that you got so good at every single Q sport and you dominated them for so many years? How did that come about happening? It's like anything else. When you put your mind into it, you're going to learn it. There's no secret to it. First, you got to fall in love to the game. And second, you got to do the work. There's no secret to it. It's just got to be passionate about whatever you do and then um, give 100% uh, effort. And uh, like like anything else, like I said, pay your dues. Like just work at it. That's uh, it's always a good question or a good answer. Uh, so Roy, we'll move on to you here. Um, at this point in time, uh, some of the people have been uh, paying attention for a while now. Uh, one, I will say, if you do not like and follow the Roy's Basement uh, Facebook page, get over there and uh, follow it. Um, you could watch Sky sing karaoke if you follow his his page, and uh, that I mean that's worth it. That's worth it by itself, right? Um, but uh, yeah. the real reason we're here is because uh, this match is happening tomorrow. And if you're a, if you're a lover of the game of pool, you this is one that you've just got to see. So how do how do the fans go about getting this uh, stream so they're able to watch it? I'm asking my uh, followers, all my pool fans, is please continue to support us. If you like what we're doing, we're going to continue doing it for you guys. You know, it's a lot of work, a lot of money involved investing to do a match like this. And yes, please order our pay per view. And we usually price it real decent, you know. I mean, I know pool is struggling, but we got to do something, you know. So to order the pay-per-view, just go to www.roycebasement.com. And from there, you can see you got options to do order the whole three-day package, the whole event, or the first day, the second day, you know. If there's a third day, the third day, you know. So, yeah, please, please continue to support us so we can continue doing this. There you go, mate. Sounds great. Uh, I cannot echo that more. I already got my package, and I will be... Ridiculously excited to be able to watch this. Um, I will also say at this point that uh, once we're done with these questions, we will open it up to a couple of fan questions. So if you are in the audience right now and you have a question that you'd like to ask uh, either of the player or Roy, uh, please write it down. I have people that are monitoring the screen so that we are uh, able to get those questions. And uh, I guess um, we're the Queue It Up podcast is uh, putting this on. So uh, make sure to head over and like and follow our page as well so that you can see more of this in the future, hopefully. And uh, so now we will move on to a question for um, Alex. Of all of the titles in your career, you kind of hinted at this earlier maybe, but of all the titles in your career, what would you say meant the most to you? And uh, what is one title that you would like to get uh, again or for the first time before your career is over? Derby City, all around. Every tournament in Derby City. <laughs> That's uh, it's... Yeah, all around at uh, Derby, yeah. How many times? Twice. Oh, he won it twice. Yeah, so. Two in a row, right? Two in a row. He he wants more. <laughs> twice in a row. Uh, so the only player in the entire world right now that can win it twice in a row is, I think, somebody in this audience. Are you going to get it twice in a row, too? Well, I mean, that's the plan, <laughs> of course. But it's so hard. There's, there's 300, 400 people in, in every event. It's so hard. you got to win 15 rounds to win the tournament. I mean, um just gonna I mean gonna play my best and, and try to win it twice in a row of course yeah so uh, another question for Sky um, so there you're definitely knocking on if you're not one of the top players in the world as of right now but uh, if there's one event uh, that's out there right now that you could win that would cement you as being a top you know two to six player in the world uh, what would that event be um, to I mean, to win the Derby City again, <laughs> that would be, I mean, it's the, that, it's I the answer that, for everything. Yeah, the Derby City or uh, the U.S. Open now, probably be my second, but 
I mean, the Derby City is, uh, I mean, the like the, the all around is, it's so big, it's, it's just like a, uh, a big notch, like in your belt for that. It's like, it's like a great feeling to know you're, uh, the best all around player at that, that event that year or whatever. Uh, so well, uh, a question for Alex. Uh, here's Alex. Yeah, let me explain to you how big Derby City is. Because you got to play 10 hours a day in all discipline. It's so freaking hard to play those many, many, many hours for nine days. And every uh, different uh, different game is going to drain your brain. And your physically is going to be tough on your body. You got to eat good. I mean, you got to be so disciplined. I mean, it's not like you're playing nine ball or the race to seven or race to nine. It tells you what to do. When you play banks, one pocket, and it's so hard because you think, you got to think every, well, like, like every minute. So that's why it's so hard. That's why when we win, it feels like we win the lottery, you know? So that's what I feel like. Yeah, and Nate, something too experience with the derby last time you know when when um, when sky was playing on a uh, nine ball in the finals with DD with James Aranis um, and James Aranis was a contender to win it all around at that point you know um, I mean I've, I've experienced with DD I mean how much pool he had to play and you had to play in the top notch, and you can't, you can't, you know. I mean, he played for like 14 to 16, 18 hours a day. You know, there's so many events, and and my wife, the CEO, was with us. She's the one who took care of all those rice cooking. I don't know how many, how many sacks of rice we cooked for Donong <laughs> last derby to get him ready. You know, so we're gonna be ready again. You know, it's it's gonna be fun at the derby. You know. Our secret. The rice is the secret. <laughs> so those clean carbs. You gotta have those clean carbs. Room for the rice. If that's the secret, I'll be there. It's all about those clean carbs, right? So, a uh, question for Alex. Uh, you got inducted into the BCA Hall of Fame this year. Uh, given the the career you've had, and you're, I know you kind of uh, you kind of stated earlier, like you feel old whenever. We talk about uh, the young players growing up and watching you, but but you're not old. You're you're still a very young man, especially when it comes to uh, your generation. With well, I shouldn't say your generation, but like some of the generation that you grew up playing against. Um, what did being a BCA Hall of Famer this early in your career mean to you? Well, to be honest with you, it's not even in my bucket list because I didn't even know when I was in the Philippines. I didn't even know Hall of Fame exists, right? until I came to uh, United States and then and I see it all the time and us growing up and it felt like hmm that's not so bad to have it and like it's not like it, it is a big thing to me right now I mean right now it is a big thing but while I'm growing up it's not because it's, I didn't even know that exists right but once I received it Oh, it felt, it felt, it, it felt so big. So, it it mean a lot to me now. And uh, question for Sky. Um, it's uh, it's not uncommon knowledge that uh, you are soon to become a father. Uh, what is that going to mean for your pool? First off, congratulations. Yeah, absolutely, congratulations. And uh, what do you think that's going to mean to your game going forward? Is it going to affect your practice or travel or tournament schedule? Um. I mean, it might every once in a while keep me from going to like um, a smaller tournament, but I mean, no, I still gotta travel. I gotta, I gotta make money. I gotta support my kid and and uh, my lady. So, I mean, I'm still going to travel and play pool uh, plenty, but of course, in between, I'm, I'm going home in between every tournament. But uh, yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for him to be here in April. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, Let me add something to it uh, real quick. Uh, you talk about him having a baby soon. Uh, James Arana is having a baby soon, too. Just about around the same time, I think, April, March, you know. I mean, April, May. So last night I noticed this because uh, James Arana's DD 
bought a uh, baby crib for his baby, you know, to surprise, to send back in the Philippines. So when Sky found out about it, that's the whole conversation last night. It's about cribs, babies, and all that. You know, let's let's go back like a year ago when I used to see these two James Aranas and the Sky. All they talk about is what we're gonna drink later. You know, where are we gonna hang out? You know? yeah. Now it's all about baby cribs. <laughs> babies. I wonder what that felt like. To have babies. You guys, what? You have one? On the way. On the way. Uh, let's not talk about mine. <laughs> there you go, Nate. A little inside scoop. Okay. Uh, so, Roy, we'll ask you uh, another question here. Um, so the we'll we'll give you a little plug for your uh, your group that you're creating. Um, all of the all of the the belt talk is going to be centralized towards uh, the new Facebook group that you created. And uh, do you want to talk about where fans can find that and if they have any recommendations for it, uh, where they can get that to so uh, they can have part of the say and maybe what happens in the future? Uh, Nate, I'm blanking out right now. Uh, can you tell me what's the group name? Because I made you one of the admin right now. <laughs> I can. Let me... Uh, uh, Roy's Basement Money Game Title Belt Kings is the name of it. And uh, you should be able to find it from your Roy's Basement page too. I did because I linked it. I remember yes. doing that, and I made you one of my admin. And I'm not—I didn't make any mistakes on that. So you and me are gonna be running it with uh, other fellow admins, you know, moderators. You know, we're gonna make it huge. I'm telling you, we're doing this all for the pool players and for the fans. You know, let's make it fun. Uh, so when can we look forward to uh, the belt for the best pool playing podcaster? <laughs> it's growing. <laughs> now, you're gonna have a lot of competition on that. <laughs> no, that's a joke, of course. Um, so, um, so I think we've had enough uh, nicety questions. We got we got to get a little bit of shit talking in here, right? So uh, we'll uh, we'll let, we'll leave this one open to Alex first. Um, what is one part about Sky's game that you think that uh, you can exploit and take advantage of to give yourself an advantage? None. Well, that's really bad well, shit talk. <laughs> well, look, this guy is one of he's one of my favorite American pool players. Not only that he plays uh, uh, good pool, his demeanor to the game, and he uh, is very uh, uh, it's very compact, and it's it, it it's kind of like it's hard to uh, uh, to find his weakness because you never know because he's always happy. He's like me. He doesn't really take. He takes. He takes it serious, but uh, he doesn't show it. And when he makes a mistake, he just lets lets it go. Um, like I said, he loves playing the game. He's a very easy guy to play with. A very nice guy. Um, tomorrow, I don't know. I'm just well. I'm gonna try my best to beat him, but uh, but. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is just a game, you know. We just play our best, and whoever whoever plays uh, the best wins, and and that's it. So, uh, Sky, what is, what is it? Uh, what does it mean to you to hear something like that when I'm trying to get shit talk out of Alex, and he just he just has to take the high road because he likes you so much? Oh, uh, sounds like he's scared. No. <laughs> um, um, I mean. It, it, it makes me feel good, of course, um, but I mean, like, I mean, I feel the same way. Like, I mean, you can't find a weakness in Alex's game. What? Think of one. Think of one thing that he does wrong. You are, we already said he's on your Mount Rushmore. He plays every game good. So what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do bad? I mean, so I mean, he's got no weakness either. It's, but it feels good to hear him say that too about my game. All right. Well, we got to get some shit talk out of uh, got out of you guys. Sky, if you had to say that uh, Alex's game was similar to one NFL football team, which NFL team would you say? Oh, I'd say Peter like uh, the. Uh, <laughs> how about uh, the the Cowboys? Ah. Uh, they're ju they're just short of the playoffs, and he's going to be just short here in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, I can't say anything. I'm a Redskins fan. Oh, your life is tough. 
Your life is tough. What well, you got, Ron Revere? Now, what's uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. I haven't been uh, following them for the last <laughs> maybe twelve years. Yeah, I was gonna say. I hope it's a long time. Uh, Alex, do you have any response to uh, being called the Cowboys? You are America's uh, team. I mean, the Cowboys I, are America's I, team, which is ironic. But I don't really uh, follow football, so. <laughs> But I know they're doing bad right now. So <laughs> from what I hear from everybody, so I, I don't know. I don't know how to respond to that. I I uh, I don't really uh, watch sports lately. Maybe basketball a little bit. So okay. if he if uh, if Sky Woodward was some NBA team, which NBA team would he be? Memphis. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's uh, a. That's a tough one right there. That's uh, Memphis is not very good. It's not. No, Memphis good. is terrible. <laughs> good. <laughs> terrible right now. That's that's fun. Only for tomorrow. Only for the next three days. Uh, okay, so uh, this will be the last question we ask both of you, and then we'll open up to a couple of uh, fan questions. Um, so get those fan questions out there, and uh, for uh, for Sky first. If and when you win this uh, this matchup here, who do you want next to defend and prove you are the Barbox King? Who is your next opponent? If I win this, I'll be the king, so uh, any of them can come play. That's right, Ann. <laughs> Alex, who do you want after this, if, you, if and when you win this? If I win or lose, they can just all line up. I'm ready to play. <laughs> anyone. Win or lose, I'm ready to play anyone. That's that's a good answer, uh, Roy. So we'll uh, let's let's open this back up to you one more time. Um, for anybody who has been tuning in recently, where are they able to find the stream so they can watch this? Because this this is not going to be one you want to miss. Yes, folks, please support us. Go to RoysBasement.com. You'll find it there. You can buy the whole package, the whole three day events, first day option, the second day. No matter what, you know, we priced it real good, you know. Please continue to support us because we can't do this without you guys. And we're going to make it fun for the all the players, you know, who ever want to challenge each other and for all the pool fans to see, you know. I mean, running that contenders list to the champion, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be fun. I think, I mean, right now I got all the pool fans talking all about it, you know. And they all have suggestions, you know. I, I wish I could accommodate all of them, but, you know, we can't, you know. They get an <laughs> so uh, a good question to start out with for the fans. Uh, Mark Schaefer says, uh, does the pay-per-view have to be watched live or can it be watched later? Uh, it has to be watched live, you know. And for those who are having problems, what we could do is we're going to be doing something different this time is if you still want to buy the pay-per-view but you might not be able to watch it you know uh, what we could do is we could set up a Facebook private group which is a secret group and if we know that you paid for a pay-per-view you want to watch it later we can include you within that group and you could watch it anytime there because it's always going to be there that match oh. Whoever that person is, you can just call me and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, why don't you give out your personal number on the on air here? But first, I got to get a phone <laughs> and a number. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a true pool player. Uh, yeah, so Nate, uh, yeah, uh, tell the... the the pool fans or on the fans on buying a pay-per-view because they might not be able to watch the whole thing. Don't worry about it. Just let my IT crew know that, hey, I can't watch it at this time, but I want to watch it later. We're going to include you on that Facebook private group, and you can watch it whenever you want. <laughs> That's a good idea. So uh, so what is your um, your IT guy's email address so that they're, uh, they're able to get to you later on? Simple. And every time that you guys message uh, Roy's Basement, the page itself, Roy's Basement, it's my IT crew guys who answers it. Most people think that it was me. No, it's it's Coach Alex and Ron and and Louie who answers the uh, the uh, Roy's Basement. If you if you want to contact me with my individual account, you gotta 
contact me and message me on my private account, which is the uh, Ariel Roy Francisco. But with Roy's Basement, it's my IT guys who answers it. And they answer quick. The last time that we did a match, which is Dennis and uh, and uh, and uh, Shane, it was very successful because those two had lap laptops in front of them. Every time you message the Roy's Basement, they go at it right away. You know, they try to fix you. They try to give you solutions. You know, they don't wait around. They don't give you. They don't give you answer where you. Oh man, you get you. You know, you get a run around. No, they want to fix you right away. You know, and with this new uh, Facebook group that they're gonna do, I think it's a very good idea because if with they're having problems and they keep having problems to get you connected, they can put you in that Facebook group. There you go, Nate. Gotcha. Uh, so we'll uh, open up a question for uh, Sky. Uh, when you were at uh, Royce today, you were hitting some balls around. We were able to watch that. Uh, were you using your personal cue when you were doing that? Yeah, what are you trying to say? I was playing bad or what? Well, you switched. Uh, you are no longer. You're back to a wood shaft. Um, what, uh, what made you switch back from the carbon? That's a question um, from Steve Hall. What made me switch back? I play I play so much pool that it's uh, it's it's so hard to switch uh, equipment because uh, there's so many events to play, and if I don't feel like I can win, then I don't want to play with it because I don't want to cost myself money by playing with it and um, making mistakes that I can't afford to. Got you. Um, I don't know how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Alex, this is a question from uh, Matthew Makano. Uh, what is your opinion on carbon fiber shafts? I don't have any because I never tried it. Well, because I, like Scholar said, <laughs> when you play something for so long, but I haven't even tried it yet, so I don't even, I'm happy with the cue that I play with, which is Ariel Carmelli. It, I'm not saying this because he's my sponsor, but that is the best hitting cue I ever owned, the best balance cue. So I'm playing with the regular shaft, um, and that's it. I love I I, I love the cue, and uh, why why should I change it? So. Uh, so a question for uh, Alex again. Uh, so hypothetical situation, this is from Eugene Liu. Pretend you're the captain for the Team Moscone Cup of Europe. Who would you pick? Who from who? You are the, the Team Europe Moscone Cup captain. Who's asking me? Who? Ah, oh, my man, Jin Liu. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, he says, or he has a question, who would you pick so that you can finally take down Sky and the Americans? Who, who, who would I pick? <laughs> Partner. As a partner? No, Who would I pick for the Team Europe? That's a good question. Cause I don't, <laughs> yeah, because I don't like eat all of them. So. <laughs> what? Like, what? I don't know. That's a really good question. I'm going to have to pass on this one. You're going to have Sorry. to pass. Okay. Uh, Eric Kwan wants to know who is taller between Sky and Alex. Um, it's not e it's not even a question. His uh, his spiked up hair don't even help him. <laughs> is that the uh, Molinari? <laughs> not anymore. Uh, Eric, you better you better be here this weekend. <laughs> Eric, I can't wait to see you. I think I say ah. Oh. Uh, a question from uh, Giles Galt. Roy, how much grass did DD cut last year? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what? Uh, DD made so much money last year, he paid for a guy to cut my grass. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, by the way, what kind of grass? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is a question for Sky. Uh, John Fleck asks, "Do you think you could out eat Alex at a taco battle royale?" It's not even close, <laughs> for sure. For sure, well, I would eat. A, I can eat a lot of them. 
Yeah, I bet he cannot eat me if you put fish eyes in there. <laughs> I'm gonna bet on Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, stop this silly question. What <laughs> uh, so, a question for both players. Um, do you think a for an average player trying to get better, do you think that they should have a seven or a nine footer in their house to practice on? Uh, we'll start with Sky first. Um, a nine footer for sure because I grew up on a bar table, and I mean I I got good on the bar table, but my big table game was wasn't the best. I mean I could beat a player here and there in a tournament, but never consistent enough to to like win a tournament. So. Um, it actually took me a couple years to to get to doing good on the big table. So I say I say get a big table and just and play that because it's easy to uh, go down in size, uh, and it's hard it's hard to go from a seven foot to a nine foot to play. Well, for me, is uh, I think this is the most uh, a lot of average pool players forget. In order for you to learn the game, you gotta you gotta diagnose your problem, because if you don't know your problem, there's no way you could get better. So it doesn't matter if it's big table or a small table, as long as you figured out what's your problem, and it's easy to fix. How can you fix your problem if you don't know? So first thing first, figure it out what is your problem, and you go from there. Yeah. For instance, um, Nate, it's me. I got a lot of problems playing pool. There you go. <laughs> uh, so this is a good question for Sky because it's it's kind of unique the 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 fan base that he has following. But uh, this is from Andy Morrison. It says, "I got to meet you in Raleigh a few months ago, and you were my favorite player. You're a great representative for the game, and I was wondering what it what your fans mean to you as a player." Um, I mean, the the fans are everything. Without the fans, without all the support, uh, we would have no games. We'd only have players, and that wouldn't be that wouldn't be uh, a sport or anything with without fans or anything. So, uh, the fans are everything. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Alex said the good the good fans. Yeah, no, all all the fans. I mean, yeah, the more support we have, the the bigger our game is. So, yeah. Okay, uh, so here's a question for both of you. Uh, with the, the larger amount of matchroom events and other big events like Derby and uh, the U.S. Opens, um, do you find yourself playing less at local events? And uh, would you like to play more local events if you could? Uh, can you repeat that real quick? Uh, Alex, forget. Yeah. I got distracted, sorry, Nate. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is a question from Michael uh, Salmon. With a... With a Larger amounts of larger events like the matchroom events, the U.S. Opens, and uh, like the Derby City type of tournaments. Do you find yourself playing in less local events? And do you think that uh, would you like to play first? Would you like to play more of those events? And do you think that uh, it kind of hinders the game a little bit by not having you monsters show up in smaller town tournaments? Well, us pool players, we're looking for a big events because um, especially for me, I'm not getting any younger. Uh, I wanted to play all the events that means to me. And because, um, I mean, for me as of now, uh, the tournaments, I want to like, how would I say this? What, to be remembered somehow, you know? I mean, at this age, I'm 41 and most of the tournaments that been played, young players wins it you know what i mean so that this is one of the reasons why i came back playing pool is uh, to play full time just because i want to see if i can still do it you know with all these uh, young guns that you know it, the pool these days is a lot tougher than it used to be so so uh, i i'm looking forward to play all the match event all the big ones so uh, and here's sky um, yeah, I mean all the the big events. Um, I don't I don't really I don't play all the the small events like I used to used to. I just look for all the small events to to just try to uh, make uh, as much money as I could as easy as I could. But but now if there's a big event, I go to the big event because uh, the title means a lot to me too. And um, but in between, I, I go to the smaller events just 
just to like stay in stroke, stay in competition, and and uh, and and maybe make some money still. Hey, uh, we're probably gonna answer two more fans' questions because uh, there's a lot of actions waiting on these two Absolutely. guys back there. Yeah. Thank you, thank you that you mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> it better be a good question. I won't answer that if it's a stupid question. Sorry, guys. Well, uh, the first one, why don't we get this out of the way? Um, why don't each player uh, thank some of the sponsors that uh, have helped them out in their career to get them to this point? Start with Alex. All right. Thank you, everyone. All the sponsors, Roy Bas Basement, everyone that's involved here. Um, Anthony, first break. Uh, thank you very much. Fans, thank you for supporting us. Um, like Roy said, uh, buy the pay-per-view. 20% is going to Alex Foundation. It goes all to my kids. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, thank you, everyone. Ate, thank you, Alex. Thank you. If I didn't say thank you to someone, thank you. <laughs> yeah, like Alex said, thanks to everybody putting on the event. Um, and thanks to uh, my sponsors, Mewtwo Q's. Uh, Kim Station Heartland, Alexville, uh, Railbirds TV. Thank you, all of y'all, with and thank you, family and friends. Yeah, uh, without y'all, I, I wouldn't be uh, do it playing the game that I love. Oh, Nate, uh, I want to add something real quick. Uh, sponsors, please, please don't get tired uh, supporting us because uh, my plan for this belt is real big. Whoever's holding it, let's say one of these two wins it, right? I'm sorry. Um, defending the title, the belt, okay? What I want to know is I need a major sponsor, and their logo is going to be on the belt. But what I need from that sponsor is every time the belt is at risk, there's a title fight, you know, is at risk. Whoever wins that match... That sponsor that their logo holds there on the belt, we're going to set something, you know. Maybe, I don't know, I'm just throwing this out. Maybe a 1,000 from that sponsor goes to the player who just won that match, you know. And I think I got room for four sponsors here. So you, for sponsors, you get to pick which event you want. You want the bar box, you know. You want the 10 ball, you know. Huh? Four for each. Four for each. Uh, yeah, for each belt. Yeah. yeah. Four yeah. different sponsors. Like Sky's liking it. You know, like let's say each one of them pitching a thousand every time the belt is at risk. It's not all the matches. Only when it's a title fight. You know, that's a thousand each. That's four thousand to the player. Let's help the players out. Let's grow the pool. Let's grow it, and it's growing. We're on the right time right now. I think we're growing it, you know. But we need the pool fans to support us, the sponsors, and pool fans to support the sponsors. That's helping us, you know. That's that's how it works, folks, so we can continue doing this. There you go, Nick. All right. Uh, so we'll ask both the, both the players this question. Um, we'll start with uh, Alex. How bad are you going to win this match? What what's How many sets, and, uh, how many sets is this going to go? Who asked that question first thing first? I uh, don't know. Sky Woodward asked it. Because how can if I would know the outcome, I will <laughs> I would never get a sponsor. I would just bet all my my own money. <laughs> Does it make sense? <laughs> so I don't know. All I know I'm gonna try my hundred percent. That's it, that's all I know. The outcome, I'll let you know on Monday. Oh yes, Nate. I want to add uh, for those I'm I've been getting some messages like Roy, please tell us who's gonna win this match. Come on, folks, this is legit. I don't do nothing like that. This is not stage. It's all about I'm trying to make this pool like a UFC fight, you know, boxing fight. So everything is legit here. Okay, even me, I can't even pick who's gonna win until now. Even now, you know, I, I don't know who to pick. I think it's gonna be a real good match. Folks, don't miss it. Don't miss this match. For sure. Uh, so, uh, we, yeah, we can let the players get out. Um, Roy, did you want to say one more time where they're able to find this to uh, to be able to purchase this and support you and the players? Roy'sBasement.com. Harry, tomorrow we're going to start 7 o'clock Eastern Time. One match. I mean, just one set tomorrow night, okay? So don't wait around. 
I mean, you guys won't be disappointed. I think these two are the best two bar box players in the world, and they're going to go at it starting tomorrow. Well, Come on, folks. If anyone disagree, all you have to do is put some money up, and you'll find out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, Nate. I think that's it. Yep, Everyone absolutely. Wrong, okay? All right, the belt. You, Nate. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, there you have it. Um, one last time, this is going to be a race to 25, best three out of five sets for $50,000. Uh, this is going to be 10 ball on the bar box, magic rack, rack your own, and winner breaks. It will begin tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, you can head over to Roy's Basement's uh, Facebook page and make sure to like that page so that you can see all of the updates. And uh, make sure to head over to the queued up page to uh, like and follow our page. And I hope we will be uh, getting some more of this stuff out there in the future. So um, I thank everybody for tuning in for this. And... Uh, Happy shooting and uh, go over and buy the stream immediately. Do not wait.